Welcome to the Work Hard, Play Hard podcast. My name is Rob Murgatroyd, and I am a former doctor turned lifestyle entrepreneur. Each week, I interview some of the best minds on the planet on the science of achievement and the art of fulfillment. Today's episode is a mini-sode that we call Fried Dates with the Wife. In these mini-sodes, my wife Kim and I deconstruct the strategies that we've developed over the last decade to not only grow personally, but to turn our struggles into lessons and create fulfillment in all areas of our lives. Excuses are over. It's time to live. Let's dig into today's topic. All right, before we jump into this episode, I want to invite you to be considered for my Work Hard, Play Hard Mastermind by completing an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. So this mastermind is not like any mastermind you may have been to or heard of, I promise you. This mastermind is for six to seven figure entrepreneurs that are working too damn much and aren't taking the time to have amazing experiences around the world with an incredible tribe of people. So every 100 days or so, I drop you into new experiences that are specifically designed to elevate your thinking, to give you new ideas. Look, you get your best ideas not staring at a computer. And actually, this is the way high-level people really collaborate with each other. They do it over a glass of champagne, watching the sunset in the south of France. So if you are ready to do some fun stuff around the world and really, really want to level up your tribe in one shot, fill out an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. We'll jump on a call and we'll see if it's a good fit. All right, let's jump into today's episode. Kimberly, hair in a bun. What is that hair? Is it a hair bob? What do you call that that you got going there? It's an elastic. But let me just tell you, if I took the elastic out of my top knot right now... Top knot. My hair would stay because that's how disgusting it is. Because I have been packing and obsessively... I don't even know the words anymore. I'm like, it's crazy. So to give uh, a little bit of reference, as Sophia says, to what we're talking about... We are um, leaving California in four days and we are going to the East Coast for about a week and then we are off to Italy and our all of our furniture leaves tomorrow, uh, goes with our daughter and then uh, our luggage leaves and and then we're off. So things are wild, things are hectic and this is the last podcast I think we're recording in the States. Mm, that's interesting. Isn't that interesting? That's so interesting. I thought what we could do today is an AMA, is a Q&A, not an AMA. And I'd, ask me anything, honey. Don't you know? Okay. Well, or it's also IRL. the American Medical Association, but I thought what we would do today is a Q&A. And what I did is I reached out to our community. So we have a little text community and we have one specifically for Italy. So I reached out to them. And by the way, if you want to get in that community, text the word Italy to 310-388-9724 and we'll be updating you uh, on our all things Italy, I guess, I guess, right? Pretty pretty obvious there, Captain Obvious. So I asked them, my question was, we're going to do a Q&A podcast on Italy. What questions do you have for us? And they are flooding in right now. So you ready to go? Ready, let's do it. Okay, I love the first question. From uh, Joshua Sheets, why has it taken you so long? <laughs> uh, Joshua, thanks for the question. Oh, that's such I, a good question. I would say it has taken us so long because I've always had a dream of living in Southern California and I wanted to fulfill that. Well, and to be fair, you and I sat down 15 years ago and did a dream line. We each did one and... Yours said move to California. Mine said move to Italy. <laughs> and we looked at it. We had that glass of wine. Somebody's, and- somebody's always crying. <laughs> it, it, on one side of the water, somebody's crying. The other side of the water, the other person's right. crying. And so we made our very first vision book together. Do you remember this one? It was red. You were going to buy 10 offices and 10 chiropractic offices in 10 years and um, sell them, create $3 million. And then we were going to live six months in Europe and six months, oh, six months in Italy and six months in and California. So much for the 10 year plan. Well, but then we but had the essence, so- the essence of the it essence was true. is there. And then we had Sophia, and you can't really do six and six with a kid in school. And so right now it's going to be 10 and two, wherever it is. So that's why it's taken us so long. Uh, next question from Greg Diaz Will you eventually move back? If so, where? 
And also, will you continue your trips to different locations, I, the Work Hard, Play Hard events, uh, and invite like-minded people. I'll let yeah. you know that. <laughs> that. Well, that's the number one question we get. How long? <laughs> it's funny. It's, we, we play a little game and the little game is um, watch people's reaction when you tell them that you're moving to Italy. And they they look at you and they when you say, we're, you know, we're moving to Florence or whatever, and they're like, Italy? And they're like, yeah. Or we'll say we're moving to Italy and they're like, I- I- Italy? And I say, yeah, we're, it's Italy. Work? No. How, well, how long are you going to be there for? Not sure. I don't know. <laughs> we, well, what do you mean? You know, like what? It, they, it just it hurts their brain. Yeah. They can't figure it out. He, here's the short answer. Our intention is to stay there. Whether or not we'll stay there, who knows? To answer the second part of your question... It's indefinite is uh, what I said. It's indefinite. Um, to answer the second part of your question, will we travel? We'll be traveling more because all the places we love to travel and have to travel infrequently to because they're so far to go are now going to be an hour and a half away, you know, Paris, Germany, whatever. So, yeah, we're going to be uh, able to actually explore much more of Europe, even Africa, uh, West Asia, the UK, all of that is going to be so much closer for us. Yep. So that'll be great. And yes, of course, he's still going to be doing work hard, play hard trips. Okay, so Mary Romano, one of our virtual mastermind members, said, how far in advance did you apply for dual citizenship and how long does that take? So dual citizenship... I think I'll have it. I think it will come in. (laughs) They're going to deliver it to my grave. Yeah, right. (laughs) Here lies the man who now has a passport to Italy. It's going to take that long. Dual citizenship is a big undertaking because you basically have to get birth, marriage, and death records for everyone going back to your Italian ancestor. And that is quite a process in a non-pandemic maybe two years in a pandemic, 150. So we are still in that process. We don't have dual citizenship yet, but we did get a visa. And I will say this real quick because I've had multiple people reach out and ask about that. So your local consulate, Italian consulate in the US can help you get a visa and you can get a work visa, which means you are cleared to work. You can get a freelance visa, which means you basically work from your computer and you're not going to be getting a job in Italy, but you're going to be able to still be self-sufficient. Or you can get a study visa. There's a lot of people that do that. And they actually, Rob just interviewed Casey Rose, who is in Italy. Uh, She's doing lots of TikToks and reels. She's hysterical to follow. And uh, she has a study visa because she's learning the language. Or you can get an elective residency. And there's all different types of visas. You just have to go to your consulate website and figure out what you qualify for. Another option is to uh, hire an attorney to help you with that. And ours is Michele Capecchi. He's incredible. We'll uh, link him up in our show notes. So do you need an attorney to apply for a visa? No, but if you do want to apply for it and have some guidance, he's an amazing person to do it. And if you want to be or take the road of dual citizenship, you 100% should go through Michele. He's phenomenal. Yeah. And if you want to hear more from Michele Capecchi, we'll link up the episode that we did with him a few months back. I did a whole hour uh, explaining this process. It's a great, uh, it's a great episode. Okay. So Grant Hudgens said, best general advice on moving there. How long did it take? Most challenging thing. And how'd you get citizenship? So I handled the citizenship part. We're on a visa. The way the visa process works is you have to actually (laughs) apply for the visa 90 days before your uh, entry point to Italy. So If you're flying out September 1, then you back it up 90 days and that's when you begin the application process. What's super fun about this is you really need to know you qualify before you apply because they require you to have a place to live that's paid for with a contract signed, airline tickets, health insurance, and a whole bunch of other things before you actually know whether or not legally you're going to have a visa. So it sounds crazy. It is sort of crazy. But if you know you're going to qualify, and that's why sometimes the help of an attorney is really helpful, uh, then that's when you would start the process. How long did it take us? I, I said that. General advice on moving there. My, I'm, I'm going to give mine and then you can give your general advice. My advice for moving there would be to take a test run first. You can be in the EU for 90 days. 
I would highly recommend booking a 90-day trip to whatever city or cities you want to test out living in. Don't go in a hotel, rent an apartment, make it as, as similar to living there as it would be. Cook in the kitchen, go grocery shopping, like all the things. Get used to the vibe of it and make sure it's something that would fit you. Rob and I did um, 90 Days in Florence and we absolutely fell in love with it and missed being there. So that would be my recommendation. Yeah, and then, you know, to get a little bit in the weeds, general moving is, let's see how I put this. We're attached to our shit. You know, we wake up, you do a Peloton, you you know, you got a physical Peloton device as an example, right? You got a TV, you like your TV. You got your desk, you like your desk. All of that shit's not coming. Because when you rent a place, they're mostly going to be furnished. That means that you've got to eliminate pretty much every piece of significant furniture right down to like, you know, when I do an interview on the podcast, I've got lights. They're not coming, right? They're going to break. So there's a thousand of those things around the house. The hang, I'm looking around at hangers, you know, in my closet. You're not taking the hanger or, or the, the, the shoe thing that hangs on my door that I'm putting. None of those things are coming with you. So the bulk of everything you own is going to be sold and or given away. All right. Well, what do you do next? Well, now you ship what you absolutely are going to need there. Well, when you start shipping what you absolutely are going to need there, things like clothes and toiletries and stuff like that, then you start running into weird stuff. Like you can't ship liquids. You can't, you, you can't ship a rechargeable battery. So there's a lot of like landmines that you have to go down. So some, some things you have to Amazon, they have Amazon there, right? Amazon.it. You can Amazon some things. And in some cases, it's cheaper to actually rebuy it than it is to ship it. So there's a lot of weird things like that, that you really have to look at. But the shortest answer is when we give people advice on packing in general, we tell them to put everything that they own out onto the bed and then literally like a pizza pie, cut it in half and take that 50% with you. This is even worse. This is taking everything you own and taking 99% of it and saying, I'm not taking it and taking 1%. And that 1% is going to wind up being in our case, how many duffel bags are we shipping? 10. 10 <laughs> duffel bags. That's the 1% that we're taking. And that's mostly clothes. Okay. So Robert Longley just actually asked a specific question on this subject. He said, what belongings are you keeping versus buying there? So to be super specific, when we started this journey, we had a an idea that we were renting a 20-foot shipping cargo container, putting everything on the slow boat and including our car, Peloton, e-bikes, all of our clothes. We were never bringing our furniture. We we knew that everything there is pretty much furnished. So we're not doing that. But all the other items, we had super high hopes of shipping on the slow boat, right? And then we found out this slow boat, it, because of COVID, is taking an extra three to six months. So it's likely to not be there in a year. And then we started to do more research on what is it like to get a an American car approved for emissions in Italy and in, inspected and like given a t- an Italian tag. Basically, it's impossible. So now we're leaving the car. What about the e-bikes? Rob calls, oh yeah, your e-bikes uh, would be have to be registered as, as scooters, as mopeds because they're too fast. Okay. Mo- motorcycles. Motorcycles. So you can't bring that. Okay, what about the Peloton? Oh, oh. And when, by the way, you'd have to take a motorcycle test. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, in can Italian. You imagine going to motor vehicles in Italian and, taking and, a and test. getting on a motorcycle and taking the motorcycle test? Or the written test in Italian. For, so, for your bicycle. For your bicycle. So uh, that's staying. Uh, the Peloton, Rob called Peloton. I mean, you could bring it, their response. You could bring it, but we don't um, do any service if it leaves the country. Okay, so that's gone. Uh, all the way up to and, and it costs it costs uh, uh, I think it was about fifteen hundred dollars yeah. to ship it. It would which co- is basically what basically it costs. what we learned is the cost of either things won't actually work there or the cost of shipping things is going to just buy it there if we really want it. So there's a lot of those items that we ended up having to get rid of. But the things that we are bringing, like Rob, obviously clothes. That being said, I also got rid of 20 bags of clothes and sent to the Salvation Army because 
I plan to buy new clothes there. And there's so much stuff. As Americans, we overbuy everything and our closets aren't going to be very big there. And we're probably going to buy Italian clothes. So 20 bags of clothes gone. Um, Sophia had to pick very few toys she, she was bringing and every in everything else went in a yard sale. She made $350 on her toys and she gets to use that to buy new toys. So there's a lot of like miscellaneous things that we can't bring and what we can bring, like our podcast equipment, we're bringing that. Well, how do you get that there? You know, we have to ship. And so and there's a lot of things that fall into that that bucket that we're still weeding out and looking and saying, yeah, we can't bring that or it's going to be okay. Or how do we wrap that? So we're still in the process and we only have a couple of days left of weeding through the things we can and can take. And then on that note, Juan Diaz asked about personal documents, medical financials, certificates, like all of the important things in your life, right? And so what I did is I took all of those documents and I scanned them into a secured server. So I had access to them and I created a little binder, like a soft covered binder with those documents in it. And they're actually going to travel with me. So I'm not shipping those. But that is a great question because there's a lot of documents, especially when you own businesses, you have all your business documents and you you can't bring everything with you, you know. And then you, that then that leaves the last area of um, what do you do with your stuff, which is the the possibility of storage. And when you think mm-hmm. about storage, when we added up the monthly fee, let's say the storage was you know even if you got a really small one, they were about a hundred bucks a month. When you add that up, you know, over the course course of the year, and you look at the uh, the contents that are in there, those things start to get old. And so, you know, whatever your television set is, it's cost you twelve hundred dollars to keep it in storage um, for the eventuality that you may or may not move in, and they go from HD to SHMHD by the time you get back, and it's completely different. And it that didn't make sense either. Yeah. Once I like even I even found a storage locker for like small memorabilia stuff and it was $29 a month. It's not expensive. But when you look at that over 10 years and it's stuff I'm never going back to, I basically put everything in a in a duffel bag, a giant duffel bag, sent it to my parents and said, "Can you throw this in the garage?" Mm. because it's not it's not worthwhile. Um so John Sinnott from our community sent five questions that are actually really great questions. Okay. So let's go through them. So does my network marketing company allow me to work in Italy? Yes, it does. We are global for the most part. We're definitely all over the EU. And my favorite product right now is the Collagen Elixir. And that just launched on... July 30th in the EU. So yep, I can do that. We can order products there. We can get pretty much everything, uh, which is awesome. Number two, are you maintaining a mailbox forwarding uh, system or anything like that? And it's really, it's a great question because Rob did a Zoom this morning with, what's it called? Earth, Earthlink, Earthbox? (laughs) Earth something or other, Earth Link. And basically what it is, while you're looking up the exact name of it. Earth Class Mail. Earth Class Mail. Basically what it is, it's kind of genius. I didn't even know this existed. Um, So baked into that question, this person knew that it existed. But for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, um, if you get a letter from the IRS or you get an important letter, what you're doing is we're now changing all of our address to this particular address. And this company opens your mail scans it, goes into an app, you get a notification on your app, hey, you've got mail. Remember that from a thousand years ago? You open it up, you look at it, and it says, what do you want to do with it? Do you want us to throw it away? Do you want us to mail it somewhere? Do you want to scan it? What do you want to do? So you have somebody opening your mail on your behalf. And even in the events that you got a physical check, let's say, because that might be in your in your mind right now. Well, what if somebody sent me a check? They will make a deposit on your behalf. So there's a lot of things that you can do. Even packages, they'll accept and forward your packages, right? Like if you ordered something or someone sent you a gift, yeah. is that accurate? They will forward anything. That's amazing. They'll forward anything, you know, for 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 like a five bucks or something. It's pretty cheap. Okay, so the next one, and I actually just said this yesterday, since you're minimizing uh, the necessities or two necessities, any advice on those of us who'd like to declutter 
more, even though we're not moving to another country? That's a great question. What did I say to you in the kitchen the other you day? You said that everybody should pretend like they're moving to to another country. Once a year. It, once a year, because it forces you to throw things out. You don't realize, you know, the 80-20 rule applies. Like you use, it's probably 90-10, you use 10% of the things in your house. Absolutely. 90% of the things are just collecting dust like, of the one time at Thanksgiving that you're going to use, you know? Well, I mean, I things like that, like if you host Thanksgiving, you're going to, that makes sense. There is so much crap that I pulled out of cabinets. Why I kept random things, I will never know. But- yeah, I would go minimalism on everything. Pretend you're moving and clean shit out. And that includes your cupboards with like canned goods because I found some shit from when we moved here in 2019 of things we never used. So there's a lot of stuff you don't use and you need to go through, pretend you're moving and say, Here, here's the question I had to ask myself on everything, okay? I had 28 boxes delivered from storage to my house. I had to go through it. This is memorabilia stuff. This is college stuff. This is all kind of bid day t-shirts from 1998, okay? Like I'm never wearing this t-shirt again. So I had to go through and say, is this important enough for me to bring to Europe and have, I have minimal space for packing. Is this important enough for me to bring or important enough for me to pay for a storage unit for the rest of my life? And the answer to most of that was no. And so our friend Darren, and uh, he does an insensitive day where all the things that you're emotionally attached to, you commit to doing an insensitive day and you toss it. I tossed so much stuff that I have been holding, uh, to be super clear, 28 boxes worth of stuff. Most of it I tossed. Most of it I was confused as to why I brought it. And that we are just moving piles of shit from one place to another that I'm never, ever going to use or look at or anything for the hopes that 150 years from now, when Sophia has children, I can show her my bid day shirt from 1998. No, we don't need that. I'll show her a picture. So that would be my suggestion. Literally pretend you're moving and ask yourself these questions. Would I pay to store it or is it that important that I would sacrifice a portion of my luggage to bring it with me? Yeah. And if the answer is no, give it away. Find your local buy nothing group, give it away, throw it away or sell it. Number four, this is probably my favorite question ever. Will Rob be able to find acceptable hair care products and, or, and a salon in Florence? You know, this is an interesting question. It's a, it's a serious one that I think everybody should lean into your earbuds right now. Yes, I use Baxter hair products and you can get them on amazon.it. So that is uh, going to be fine. But just in case I brought, uh, I bought three containers of it. So I'll have it when I arrive. So we don't have to worry right. about that. But the okay, bigger, but can the I tell you what's actually going to, let me tell you what's actually going to happen. What, I know what you're no, going to say. Let, you're, me say. let me say it for ah, you because I know what you're going to say. All right. So the second part, the second part of your question is, will I be able to find suitable hair cutters? Last time I was in Italy, that was my biggest anxiety. Uh, yeah, it was. And um, <laughs> of all the things, it was my biggest anxiety. Every single random hair, I realized that my haircut is a very easy haircut to do. You shave the sides, you shave the back, and you keep the top a little longer. It's I almost could do it myself if I wanted to. I wouldn't dare. Do you want me to get a floby? But I almost could. So I'm not concerned about that. Of course, I'm going to get a good recommendation from somebody good. So I'm not concerned about that. Are you having amnesia right now? No, the... What? Okay. I'm like actually having an out-of-body experience. Why? We spent 90 days there. You found a hair cutter there you loved and... I caught you numerous times calling Italy, no, asking them if they would ship you hair product to no, California. No, I was just going to get to that. That's what I, that's what I said. Okay. Every hair cutter I went to was better than the previous one. Right, but that's but why are you bringing all the Baxter if you know if the product you oh. really wanted was there? Oh no, 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 no. Um, security because I don't recall whether or not that Baxter is new to me, and I don't recall whether or not this new one is going to be better than the old one that was in Italy. I got this old okay, hand. Look for the update where I show you under the sink where Rob goes for his first haircut. 
comes home with completely new products and he never uses the Baxter again. Are there any other questions? Yes. So question number five from John is, how is Sophia reacting as the move date gets closer? Mm. This is an interesting question and here's why. Sophia thinks that we are moving to Shangri-La, okay? She thinks that the world's problems are going to be answered when we move to Italy. She's saying, I never liked it here in California. I don't like the house that we live in. And I don't know. It's either one of two things. It's either that she has heard her mom and dad talk so lovingly about it that she's um, jumping on the Italy uh, train or she has watched Disney's new movie, Luca, and she believes we're going to be living in a cartoon of pasta or she just really doesn't like California and anything is better for her. I'm not sure what, but I'm afraid that she's going to be disappointed in not that Italy is bad. We're certainly going to Italy because we, we love it, but it's old. There's not going to be elevators to walk up steps. Um, it is the creature comforts that she's used to cold, very cold air conditioning, very fast Wi-Fi, uh, et cetera, et cetera, isn't going to be there. And I'm a little concerned that she's going to be disappointed and say, this is not what I signed up for. Although I could be wrong. Well, okay. So let's break that down real quick. We were there for 90 days. She absolutely loved it. Our friend, uh, Darren said something really uh, important about traveling with Sophia. And he said she might not remember the places, but it's going to become a part of who she is. And her soul will remember it when she's there. And when we were there, she was dancing in the piazzas, having the gelato, loving the pasta, trying new things, going to school, being active. She really didn't complain too much about stairs and stuff like that or Wi-Fi, like we did 90 days there. So I think it was great. Um, I think she really enjoyed it. Yes, there is a bit of a romanticizing it right now because she's been in California, lockdown, Zoom school, and all of that. So I definitely think that played a role in how she feels about California. But on the positive side, I think she's really excited. She's traveled so many countries in the world. And at almost seven years old, they're really pliable at this age. And so I think she's going to do great. The only one I'm worried about is is Robert. Yeah, me too. Well, yeah. One last question I was asked yesterday that I think is fun. Kathy Savage, our friend Kathy, asked us, what are we going to miss most? And I think that's a good question for each of us to answer. About America or where we're... Just what are you going to miss most? Do you want me to go first? Yeah. So for me, I'm going to miss the proximity to my friends. I'm going to miss being able to fly one or two hours and do a girl's weekend or things like that, like my best friends that I've had. So I'll miss that proximity. Seeing them is going to take much more intention and um, a, a flight across the pond for someone. That's one thing. And then the trivial thing that I'm going to miss is Trader Joe's coconut oil. Because I've tried a gazillion other kinds of coconut oil and I hate them all. Trader Joe's has the best coconut oil. And that's going to be the trivial thing that I'm going to miss. Well, the, the first thing that popped in my mind is I'm going to mix, miss the proximity to our older daughter um, because she can come down here for the weekend. We can talk every day. Now there's going to be a 10-hour time change and it's a 10-hour it's a you know, flight more flight to get her there. So that that would be the first thing. And then the second thing is I really enjoy beach culture. I like it. And um I am going to miss the weather and the beach. That yeah. would be that would be the two things that I would say I'm going to miss the most. Aww. But there you have it ladies and gentlemen on to bigger and better things. So this next podcast will be from Italia. We should do it in Italian. You think in the first week we'll be able to be fluent enough to do the podcast in Italian? God, no. God, no. But again, let me give you this number again. If you want to jump on our community list for Italy, text the word Italy to 310-388-9724. And every time I do that, I feel like a game show host from 1985. That's it, everybody. And Don Pardo, tell them what they've won. Well, they've won an all expensive paid... Expensive? (laughs) have a great week everybody bye bye 
All right. Thanks for listening. If you love this episode and you know someone that needs some help in either stepping up their work hard game or their play hard game, it would mean the world to me if you shared this podcast with them to help me get this movement out there. So if you like what you heard, head on over to iTunes, take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and I will be forever grateful. So until the next episode, excuses are over. It's time to live.